I really can't think of an intro right now. I guess that counts as the intro. Um, <laughs> since most of the people who are subscribed to this channel and are watching videos on this channel tend to be some of my more loyal subscribers, I guess you could say, tomorrow I have a video dropping, which is my first Friday video, which if you saw my channel update means is my first big video that I'm going to be doing once per week. So if you could support that when it comes out, it'd be much appreciated because I put a lot of effort in this video and I'm really proud of it. So when that comes out on the main channel, subscribe. And speaking of subscribing, if you are not subscribed to this channel already and you are watching videos over here or you are uh, subscribed to my main channel and you want to see uh, post-game reactions, then subscribe over here. But with that out of the way, uh, I do want to say for these games today that my attention for these games was not as high as it is normally just because I kind of had to pull an all-nighter because this video took more effort than I expected it to. It's going to be like 25 minutes long, so... A bit off a bit more than I could chew. So as a result, I was editing while watching games, which means my attention was split 50-50. So my observations for the games today were not as great as I would like them to be. So I watched about the first three quarters of Jazz versus Hawks. Uh, I saw that Trey was out as soon as the game started, and I thought about turning the game off. But I was like, I have not watched the Utah Jazz in a long time, and they've been doing really well. So... I want to watch the Utah Jazz, even though it's against a depleted Hawks team. Uh, there wasn't much to say here. Uh, <laughs> I just wrote down Rudy Gobert took a mid-range jump shot with about 11 seconds on the clock when there was no defender near him. And it actually wasn't embarrassingly off. Like, it hit the rim. The shot looked ugly. But, I mean, he shot, like, two other jumpers in his career, and I'm pretty sure they were both air balls. So, that's an improvement, I guess. Um... Oh, uh, this is something I also wanted to address. Uh, I don't know what his exact stats were in this game, but I know when I was watching him play that, uh, uh, what's his fucking name, Jordan Clarkson was playing really well. I said yesterday uh, in my video where I talked about Thaddeus Young or Thaddy Daddy is the guy in the comments would like me to call him. Uh, I said there was no clear six man of the year candidate. That is false. There is a clear six man of the year candidate, and it is Jordan Clarkson. Because he is averaging 17 on near on nearly 50, 40, 90. Actually shooting almost 100% from the free throw line. And he's doing that on 8 three-point attempts per game. I don't know what he finished his game with. But he was doing well in this game as well. And his stats this year have been awesome. So just kind of slipped my mind on that one. Uh, I, I wrote, can't tell if the Jazz are just a lot better at making shots. And... Or, sorry, can't tell if the Jazz are just a lot better or are making shots that they normally wouldn't and they'll come back down to earth. That's kind of the big question with this Jazz team. Is this legit or is this just a lot of hot shooting? Because you look at it, it seems like a complete statistical anomaly that they have this many shooters shooting as well as they are from three right now. We're going to have to wait and see. As of right now, I'm going to lean kind of like it's in the middle. I do think this team's gotten better, but I don't expect there to be like... I think it's like four players on this team shooting over 40% on over six three-point attempts per game. I think even seven up where up or something like that. Anyways, um, what was noteworthy here is that the Hawks actually didn't do too bad without Trey Young. Uh, the game, it was like a 20-point game by the third quarter, so it still wasn't good. But like I was expecting them to get embarrassed, and I wouldn't say they were embarrassed. At least not in comparison to the level of talent that I believe this team to be without Trey Young. So that's that's something, I guess. But as I said, I turned off uh, this game after about the third quarter. The main game that I was focusing on even through that was Mavs versus Warriors. Uh, I just dropped a video on the Dallas Mavericks today, and it's not doing very well. So if you could go watch that after watching this video, that'd be much appreciated. I talked about some of the issues that the Mavericks have had this year, and those issues continued, continued to persist in today's game as they would lose to the Golden State Warriors. Um, I, here, just for some of my notes, uh, Steph versus Luka is always fun. Tired of watching the Warriors' shitty supporting cast ruining uh, Steph and Draymond's chemistry. Uh, I wrote that down after there was a pick-and-roll play that Steph and Dre did where Dre kicked it out to uh, a wide-open Kent Bazemore, and he bricked it. Now, I will say that the Warriors' supporting cast outside of those two was rather good today as Kelly Oubre, uh, God bless his soul for being so damn cute, uh, put up 40 points in today's game. Uh, I think it might have even been more than that. It was 40-something by the time the game was over. Hit seven three-pointers. Uh, he was just driving to the basket mercilessly, dropping the shots. It, it was a very good game. It's probably the best game of his career and easily the best game as a warrior. Uh, so good-ass game for Kelly Oubre. Um, I, I, I keep hearing about Wiggins being better, 
and I don't doubt that he is better because I've seen the clips on Twitter and I've seen all the praise for him. But literally every Warriors game that I watch, and I've watched like three out of the last probably like, I don't know, six, seven, something like that. Every time I watch a Warriors game, he plays bad. I don't know what his ending stats were, but I know when I was really focusing in, which were the first three quarters primarily, as that's when the game was close, Wiggins was missing every shot that he took. Uh, I watched a Brad Watermaker post up, and I want to die. Uh, I don't. If, I don't know if, if you're watching that game, you know what I was talking about. Why was Brad Watermaker posting up? Um, I, I also put. Uh, I don't. I, I'm not going to bother with that. I wrote. It might be time for a conversation about Porzingis. I don't think it is. I was being a little little tad dramatic and a little bit tad in the moment. Um, little defense was being played in this game. The, in the first half, the score was 76 to 74, which if you didn't know, that's a lot of points for both sides. Uh, Luca's threes were dropping in this game, at least for the first three quarters. But uh, to close out this game, the Warriors went on a bit of a run and then the Mavericks went completely cold. So, uh, that's obviously a recipe for disaster on top of the fact that no one could stop Kelly Oubre of all people. Uh, that was, that's why they lost this game. Also, uh, Steph, I said last time when I covered a Warriors game that Curry was having times where he's being a little bit too timid in this game, especially early. He came out very aggressive and I appreciated that. Um, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it for them. I watched a quarter of Heat versus Sixers, uh, or shit, was it not Heat versus Sixers? It was... Blazers versus Sixers? Am I stupid? I'm pretty sure it was Blazers. Yeah, it was Blazers versus Sixers. Why did I write down Heat? I guess I saw the red and got confused. Um, I didn't watch all but the last minute of the first half, and then I watched the third quarter, and then the Blazers like got some separation, and Bede put up 31 in the first half, and I believe he scored like 25 of those in the second quarter. I wish I'd watched that quarter instead of more of this uh, Hawks jazz game because that was kind of a waste of time. Um, really, I just wrote a couple of notes here, uh, two notes because I only watched basically a quarter and a minute. Gary Trent Jr. can do no wrong. That speaks for itself. Uh, Sixers offense still has moments of awkwardness. Think that will always exist with Ben and Embiid playing together, but it has been better as of late. I also have done a video on the Sixers. This video is all about the shameless plugs. Uh, that video also didn't do as well as I would have liked. It's about how Daryl Morey shaped this team in the offseason and the result of that thus far this year. Uh, but that's that game. And really the game that everyone was looking forward to today. Oh, shit. Oh, God damn it. I completely forgot to open this video uh, by saying um, Christian Wood get well soon because he had a bad ankle injury that he had to be uh, wheelchaired off of the court. I'm um, hoping that that's not a big deal. Obviously, I'm a huge Christian Wood fan, uh, so hopefully he is just fine there. Uh, it does just look like a really bad ankle sprain, and I'm praying that's what it is. Well, not praying because I, I don't pray, but whatever the version of that is. Anyways, uh, yeah, Christian Wood, get better. I meant to put that at the start, but here it is. So the Nuggets versus Lakers game was the one that I was... Holy, what the fuck? Can I help you? I'm not editing that out. Um, a D'Angelo Wallace video just randomly started playing. Um, anyways, uh, Lakers versus Nuggets. <laughs> uh, I feel bad for people that click on these videos not knowing who I am and not knowing the deal on this channel. And they're like, what kind of unprofessional shit is this? Whatever, dude. Uh, first thing I wrote, because he hit a three and got a layup right out of the start, I stand Jermichael Green. I, even though I think the loss of Plumley and Grant was pretty big for the Nuggets in this offseason, Jermichael Green is not a bad replacement for Grant. If you're just going in the cheaper route, he can space the floor and still be a pretty good defensive player. And this year, he is shooting like one of the highest three point percentages in the NBA, as far as I'm aware. So that's good. Um, Will Barton is a weird player, and I put in brackets, I can never really tell how good he is. There are games where I'm like, this is one of the better role players in the NBA. Even sometimes a game where I'm like, this guy sometimes does some star shit. And then there's also games where it's like, why is this guy on the court right now? He's inconsistent. And then I can't even really figure out what his entire skill set is. There's games where he looks like a knockdown shooter. Uh, games where he looks like he can't shoot for shit. Games where he looks like a big time ball handler. Games where it looks like he can't create for shit. So I don't know, man. Will Barton is a weird case. Um, what I thought was interesting was some of the lineups the Nuggets were running. I only noted one, but there were a handful of weird lineups. They were running Jermichael Green and Paul Millsap with Nikola Jokic. So I assume one of either Paul 
or Jermichael Green were at small forward there. And I'm pretty sure the Lakers like a normal starting lineup within the game there. So that was that was odd. I think Jermichael Green picked up LeBron a couple possessions. That's interesting. Um, I'm going to talk about the Nuggets overall here in a second. Uh, Dennis Schroeder did a dive twice onto the court to cause a shot clock violation. And then, of course, Reggie Miller and Kevin Harlan had to freak out about that and how it was a championship play. But, I mean, it was a it was cool hustle play, so I wanted to just highlight that there. Um, so what I want to talk about mostly with this team, also one more note before I get to that. Uh, I just realized that this team technically has no real like NBA caliber backup five. They never actually really replaced Mason Plumley. They just got a good backup. So or they didn't get a good backup. So now they're running Isaiah Harthenstein, which uh, fun fact, not fun fact at all. I thought Isaiah Harthenstein would be pretty good. This is the second channel. Oh shit, my ankle is showing. Ugh. No, that's only for the only fans. <laughs> this video is a fucking disaster. Good lord. Um, yeah, uh, they don't have a backup five, which is not ideal. Anyways, so the Nuggets in general, that's the main thing I want to talk about today. Has this team hit its ceiling? That's going to be the title of this video. Um, because they're definitely a lot worse than they were last year. And you can argue last year the personnel was better. So that's one of the biggest reasons why. But Jamal Murray being Bubble Murray, I don't. I think the hope of that being who Jamal is or an extension of it is kind of dying, and that's unfortunate. Um, Michael Porter Jr. I think is kind of stagnated now. I think the uh, the Nuggets can be doing more to incorporate him in the offense further to allow him to get better opportunities. As it seemed like he was spotting up a lot in this game when they should be doing their cutting and things like that and moving off ball, all that stuff. The Michael Porter I've praised for him, praised about him before. Um, but outside of Michael Porter reaching his ceiling, I don't really see how the Denver Nuggets are getting much better in the long term. And I even think Michael Porter's ceiling as a score and how that fits alongside with everybody else, they're still not going to be like a good enough defense for me to like confidently say this team is going to be championship level. So I'm starting to wonder if this team needs to consider making a change. Um, I don't know what the exact change is, but I'm kind of feeling like this team is stagnating. Uh, last year, they were a little bit better than the year before. Uh, the year before that, they were a lot better than the year before. And this year, they're a little bit worse than the two years ago. So uh, Denver, it's in a tricky situation. Of course, losing to the Lakers is fine. I didn't even really go over how this game went down. It was close for the most part. And then the Lakers just took the game over to close the third quarter and just blew it out of the water in the fourth. Um, so I just noticed with these weird rotations specifically, my nose is very itchy. Um it, it was like, it felt like the Nuggets were running out of bodies. Like, it was like they were running lineups. Like, one of them was like, um, uh, what's the name of that point guard? Uh, point guard number 11. Why is his name? Monte Morris. And then it was him, uh, Jamal Murray, Will Barton, Jamichael Green, and Isaiah Harthenstein at one point. And I was like, that's an ugly lineup. And it's like... Do you just do you guys just not have anybody left to put in the game? <laughs> uh, the depth on this team is worse. The defense on this team is much worse with the loss of um, Jeremy Grant. It's rough. It is rough. Uh, but I, I'm not necessarily saying that the Nuggets need to make drastic sweeping changes. I am just saying that I do think the Nuggets need to have a little bit more of a critical eye on them, and there is a reason to be concerned about their potential future. But uh, that's all I really had to say. This is not a strong opinion. As I said today, um, my focus was not as much on the games as I would like it to be for these types of videos, but I figured I'd give you some of my opinions regardless. Uh, take whatever you want with a grain of salt. I'm just a douchebag talking about basketball on the internet. Goodbye.